Hey, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the 10 most outrageous Pawn Star items. If you're a fan of Pawn Stars, make sure to leave a like on the video. Also, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we release our daily videos. Now with all that being said, let's get right to the video. Number 1. Dinosaur Eggs well, This egg has been identified as Dendrolithus. It would have been a duckbill dinosaur. A duckbill dinosaur. Wow. Well, it's like the lamest of all dinosaurs, right? You hear the word dinosaur eggs and you automatically assume they're worth big money. The seller certainly thought so and she offered to sell them to Corey for $20,000. Unfortunately, that is not the case and the dinosaur expert put a quick stop to her ambitions. He identified them as belonging to a duckbill dinosaur called the Dendrolithus. However, he also stated that these are far more common than you would think as there are tens of thousands on the international market. As such, each egg is only worth between $300 to $600. Corey ended up buying the eggs for immediately $500, a far cry from the initial $20,000. I really can't, you know, I mean, figuring the most I'm going to be able to get out of these is 12 mm -hmm. And a year from now, if they're sitting here, I'm going to knock them. Number two, a Grammy Award. Hey, how are you today? Oh, pretty good. Usually I'd ask, what do you got here? But that's pretty damn obvious, ain't it? It is obvious. <laughs> this is Ronald Dunbar and General Johnson. This Grammy Award has quite the storied history. It was originally given to Ronald Dunbar and General Johnson back in 1971 for their song Patches, which won the award for Best R&B Song. It then made its way to someone who needed legal counsel and gave it to their lawyer as a form of payment. The lawyer then brought it into the shop where it was purchased for $2,350. It's definitely an odd number, but just think, Rick's original offer was only $1,500. The lawyer certainly knew how to negotiate and he got himself an extra $850 in the process. Now let that be a lesson to all you sellers out there. <laughs> and the winner is... I'm at the pawn shop today to try and sell my Grammy Award. I've had this thing since 1983. That's when I first... Number 3. Elephant Wigs statue I like to sell. Do you know much about it? I don't know what to tell you about that. This is a statue called Pegasus, and this is Perseus. Perseus was the mythological figure that killed... Oh, the things that will come into a pawn shop. In this episode, a confident man wielding a specialized carrying case walk into the shop, tickling the curiosities of Chumley and the old man. Unfortunately, what was inside said case was a disappointing load of crap. Literally. It was a can of elephant waste suitably named Zudu, albeit beautifully labeled, the seller asked for a ridiculous $10,000, believing the item to be a rare novelty, or he was just trolling. Luckily, the old man didn't bite, although Chumley personally purchased the can for $20. It would certainly make for an interesting conversation starter. Medusa. So, uh, what can you tell me about this thing? It was made in 1888 uh, by the French sculptor Emile Picard. If this is a genuine Picard, we're talking... Number 4. Exploding Die Pack. What do we have here? I've got an exploding die pack from the uh, bank. $1,000 of $10 bills. A man who is definitely not a professional bank robber walked into the shop with a novelty item, an exploding pack of $10 bills. As he and the professional explained, these fake stacks are snuck into a bag of real money during a robbery and are meant to explode upon leaving the bank, coating both the criminal and the money in a colorful die. This not only exposes the criminal in public, but it also renders the money totally useless. While Rick initially questioned the legality of purchasing and owning such an item, he eventually got the okay and purchased the stack for $175. It's a real rare item that is legal to own and it's worth a lot of money. Hey Rick. Mark. How you doing? The guys normally call me down here when they've got something that's a little odd. Number five, a stolen submarine. Corey heard about a team trivia night at a local bar. Sounds fun. My only big concern is keeping the old man awake. <laughs> I figure since I'm team captain, I should get a hundred. You gotta be careful with big purchases like this because there's always a chance that it's been stolen. Unfortunately for Rick, that was the case for this one man submarine. Rick states that a miniature sub in good condition can bring it up to $10,000. However, the sub brought to Rick needed some TLC and he purchased it for $3,000. A lawyer in California was watching the episode when he recognized the sub as it rightfully belonged to his wealthy client. Turns out, the sub had been stolen from him five years earlier, although not by the seller, whom police claim had no knowledge that it had been stolen. Much to Rick's probable disappointment, the sub was reclaimed and returned to his rightful owner. What was the name of the horse that Paul Revere owned? I got this. Are you sure? I'm positive. Number six, an old blood transfusion kit. What do we got 
vampire? A vampire defense kit. All right. It looks like a, a real kit for killing vampires. And these things aren't supposed to exist. Oh, it must be exciting to work at a pawn shop. Sometimes people walk in with some old baseball cards or something. Other times they walk in with old blunt transfusion kits. No biggie. This kit includes a traveling case, clear glass jars, and rubber tubes. The owner states that she doesn't need it any longer, which kind of scares us, and asks for a really specific $211 for the whole kit. Chumley offers her $100 instead, but works his way up to $125 after getting a particularly scary threatening stare down from the customer. Ah well, we're sure this woman is lovely and certainly not a vampire. This is like the apex of the Victorian fascination with spirituality. You had famous people in society who believed in vampires. It was fascinating. Number seven, the Wayne's World car. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. So this is it. This is the car. This is the Wayne's World car. The 1976... The Mirthmobile itself made an appearance on an episode of Pawn Stars. When Rick traveled to Orlando to see the iconic car in person, the car is a 1976 AMC Pacer, which Rick calls one of the ugliest cars ever made. Fair enough, the baby blue color and added flames certainly doesn't help. The car still had the original camera mounts installed, although it did not run and it needed a lot of bodywork to look like it did in the movie. Due to the car's rough condition, Rick purchased it for $9,500. Luckily, the car was eventually restored to its former glory and sold at auction for $37,400 in 2016. World, a really, really popular movie, but um, it's rougher than I thought. It's just been sitting for 20 years. It needs body work, it needs interior work. I mean, this car needs a lot of work. Number eight, electrotherapy kit. Honestly. This is an antique bone drill set. It dates about 1890s. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're a doctor. That's right, because doctor. Where does someone even get their hands on a vintage electrotherapy kit? The woman in question had what is called a Master Violet Ray No. 11, an old medical appliance that is used electrotherapy to treat things like headaches, acne, constipation, and male pattern baldness. Of course it was all nonsense. Wait, you mean electricity doesn't cure acne? Ah, come on! Anyways, Violet Rays were first developed in the late 1890s and eventually prohibited in the United States in the 50s because they were both entirely useless and incredibly dangerous. After testing it out on themselves, Rick and Chum pay $75 for the device. You attach one of these rounder bits, put the point in there, and start to adjust this to the depth that you want it to be. Yeah. Number nine, liquid pistol. My guy Craig, to clear up some questions for me. I don't get surprised very often, but today's a surprise. I have seen two of these in my life. So it turns out that you can use liquid to fire a gun. Who knew? Craig Gottlieb of Gottlieb Military Antiques was brought in to review a gun and what he found was simply incredible. He claimed the gun is unbelievably rare and that it used liquid carbonic acid to fire. According to Craig, the carbonic acid would instantly expand into gas which in turn generated enough pressure to fire the pellet. Despite him praising nearly every aspect of the gun and proclaiming time and again just how rare of a collectible it is, Craig only priced the weapon at $3,000. Talk about disappointment. Rather surprisingly, Rick bought the gun for $2,500 life. Wow. This is the third one. Okay. Air rifles are very collectible. Air pistols are very collectible. I'm at a loss for words. Okay. First question is, is it compressed air? And finally, number 10, Saddam Hussein's fingerprints. We all have an interest in the macabre, even if we don't want to admit it. Rick even remarks that he doesn't like purchasing things related to evil people, but he admits that there is a market for this type of memorabilia. As such, he showed an interest in Saddam Hussein's fingerprints. The seller states that he was involved in the arrest of Hussein and the fingerprints were allegedly given to him as a gift. Now that is arguably the weirdest gift anyone has ever been given. Was a nice watch too much to ask for? Rick had no idea how to value the fingerprints and offered the seller $1,500. The seller thought he could earn up to $10,000 at auction and ended up walking. And that's all for now. Stay tuned for more exciting content when we return. And again, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos.